Hello, people of grace. For today's pastoral word of encouragement, I would like to talk about hope as we face both external trials and hope as we face internal trials. Uh, yesterday was the presidential inauguration, and uh, four years ago, many of the people who were most hopeful yesterday were very anxious. Meanwhile, Many people who were more anxious yesterday were very hopeful four years ago. And so we see the topsy-turvy kind of hope that often drives us and how weak that hope is um, to really protect us from anxiety. Uh, for that hope to protect us, external things have to go in a way that we think is um, right or correct. and we. It's not about whether we're right about that. It's our need for those things to go that way for us to truly have hope and peace. And as followers of Christ, uh, we want our wells of hope to be dug a little deeper than that, really a lot deeper than that. And the external trials reveal internal vulnerabilities. And what's supposed to be invulnerable in a mature believer is the three cardinal virtues, faith, hope, and love. And I speak of hope as kind of the quieter sister of those three virtues. Uh, in our circles of evangelical Christianity, we talk a lot about faith and we talk a lot about love. Um, and we talk about hope, but not as much. But today, I want to talk about hope, especially in the face of internal trials, and we're drawing that from 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 17, which is what um, I landed on in my last sermon at Grace two Sundays ago, and I'll be picking back up this Sunday. But first I want to mention something from 1 Peter 1. Peter talks about, through God's great mercy, he gave us a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And that hope is based on an inheritance that God has given us that he keeps in heaven by his power, and that inheritance is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Um, it's secure, and that's supposed to be the source of our hope, even when we face trials. And these trials come so that the tested genuineness of our faith might be revealed. Um, so Peter, in 1 Peter, is talking here, I think, a little bit more about external trials, uh, just challenging, stressful circumstances. His, uh, he was writing to people who were starting to get persecuted for their faith. Um, you know, the, the world was turning against the Christian faith at that time. And those external trials, um, contrary to what we think, don't break people. External trials reveal internal vulnerabilities. And both kinds of trials are real, the external trials and the internal trials of vulnerabilities in my soul. Um, but when you look at the life of Jesus, as he headed into his public ministry and his greatest external trials ultimately ending in the cross, he first was tested in the wilderness to address human internal vulnerabilities. And those internal vulnerabilities line up with what John mentions in 1 John 2, 15 through 17. The desires of the flesh, turn the stone into bread. The desires of the eyes, I will show you all the kingdoms of the world. That's how the devil tempted Jesus. Um, and the pride of life, um, the boasting in physical things, the empty boasting in physical life. Uh, that's the big house or the ego wall with all your degrees and certifications um, or the sports car or the nice clothes. Uh, nothing automatically wrong with any of those things. It's more the pride that we place in them and how we feel better about ourselves if we have those external things to comfort our really very weak self-concepts. Uh, we're not as grounded in hope as we could be, um, but we can keep getting better. And though maybe none of us are as grounded in hope as we could be, uh, when I look at the people of grace and the way that you have persevered through this pandemic and 
the way we have been able to be a, a diverse congregation, uh, even politically, which is really hard to do in today's world. Um, what I see is a people showing a true hope kept in heaven for you, imperishable, undefiled, unfading. Um, and that's a very encouraging testimony to me. Uh, it, it actually helps my hope um, stay strong. And I want to affirm you for that. Um, but remember that the bigger thing that undoes us is not the external trials, it's the internal vulnerabilities, the fleshly desires, the desires of the eyes, the things that we see. We were content until we saw that. Um, you know, and especially for today's Pastoral Connect, the pride of life, the way that we glory in physical things, and that would include political parties. Uh, let's uh, be more heavenly minded than that. If we are truly heavenly minded the way Jesus was heavenly minded, we will be of more earthly good because we will be people of hope regardless of the ups and downs of life and the external things. And that's an encouraging thought. Be a person of hope today, a hope that is rooted in an internal strength that sees through the vanity and the delusion of the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and the pride of life. Let's be like Jesus and come through our testing well. Have a great day.